Daniel Ricciardo's bid to take Sergio Perez's Red Bull drive started with a strong early impression on his F1 comeback. Ricciardo has a dream of eventually being Max Verstappen's teammate again after returning to F1 in the middle of the season with Red Bull's second outfit, Alpha Tauri. And Red Bull's admitted that part of the reason for picking Ricciardo to replace Nick de Vries is that he's a more interesting option for them to evaluate right now. The Hungarian Grand Prix was the first chance to assess how Ricciardo and Perez would perform in such high-stakes circumstances. And despite Ricciardo's race result being badly compromised by a first corner clash he was not to blame for and finishing 13th, it was as good a start as Ricciardo could have hoped for. Red Bull has loaned Ricciardo to AlphaTauri for the remainder of this season, having hired its former racer as third driver for 2023. Rejoining the grid with a backmarker team, which AlphaTauri is right now, goes against Ricardo's previous declarations from when he agreed an early end to his McLaren contract last year that he would only be interested in securing a competitive seat. But both Ricardo and Red Bull team boss Christian Horner admitted before the Hungarian GP that Ricardo's long-term play with his comeback is to eventually take Perez's seat. Verstappen and Perez are under contract for next season and Horner has repeatedly stated that both will remain at Red Bull Racing in 2024. So at least for now, Ricardo's ambition is being talked about in the context of replacing Perez in 2025. That's when Perez's contract expires and we understand that Ricardo has nothing firm in place beyond this year at the moment, although Red Bull does have an option on him for at least next season and probably 2025 too. And while Perez is under contract for next year, Red Bull has never shown mercy to a driver it believes no longer serves the right purpose. After all, that's the reason Ricardo is back in F1 right now. Perez will be ousted early if Red Bull wants it to happen. It depends on how he performs and whether Ricardo makes a compelling case that he's moved past his McLaren Nadir. Another fascinating admission around Ricardo's comeback is that Red Bull wanting to establish how good an option he is long term is one of the specific reasons he's in the Alpha Tauri seat. Horner made it clear that properly evaluating Ricardo was a key part of Red Bull's thinking for giving him de Vries' seat over someone like junior driver and Super Formula title contender Liam Lawson. Even though Lawson would naturally be a better fit for what is still effectively a Red Bull training ground, Horner said evaluating Ricardo was the most interesting option from a Red Bull racing perspective. The most likely outcome from here would be Ricardo earning a full-time Alpha Tauri seat in 2024, but it's still pertinent that Red Bull felt so compelled to evaluate him properly before then. All of this has put a target on Perez's back. He's already stressed he's not paying attention to any speculation, so we know he won't be watching this video. He's pointed to the fact he is under contract and he has Red Bull's backing, and a lot of that messaging was repeated in Hungary. Perez was mostly quite relaxed and extremely complimentary about Ricardo, although at the same time he brushed off the idea he's under more pressure now Ricardo's back on the grid. Unfortunately for Perez, some of his actions on track were not an immediate reinforcement to his fighting talk off it. While Ricardo pieced together a pretty strong first weekend back in F1, Perez had to fight back from another ill-timed struggle. Arriving in Hungary looking to end a run of five consecutive races in which he failed to make Q3 in qualifying, Perez shunted on his very first flying lap in practice when he dropped a wheel onto the grass. A saving grace for Perez was the red flag he caused stopped anyone completing even a minor amount of useful dry running as conditions changed, which meant he at least returned to the track in FP2 on more or less a level playing field. And he looked to be taking advantage of the reprieve as come Saturday, Perez looked just as quick as Verstappen. He comfortably broke his recent Q3 curse, but there was another setback to come. Perez blamed misjudged tyre preparation for a cautious start to his final run in Q3, which meant he only qualified ninth on the grid when he clearly had the pace to be fourth, just a couple of tenths behind Verstappen, which would be perfectly fine. There was clearly more underlying pace in him, not just the car, which is more encouraging than some of Perez's recent qualifying disappointments. But that really just meant, after everything, a familiar story. Perez trying to shrug off a disappointment and then facing a damage limitation job in the Grand Prix. He limited that damage pretty well, putting in an aggressive, hard-charging performance to battle his way through to third place and earning driver of the day in the eyes of the fans. Team boss Horner called it a statement drive from Perez, but it now needs to be the start of something. Perez said he wants to be on the podium at every race from now on, and he has one more weekend before the summer break to prove he can take momentum from this performance. And being ruthless, which as we all know is the Red Bull way, he's not in that seat to put in charging recovery drives and salvage podium finishes. 
In the cold light of day, third place when Verstappen won by over half a minute means Perez left points on the table and cost Red Bull what should have been an easy one too. At the same time, Ricardo ticked every box he could have hoped for. Even though Ricardo did not have expectations for his first weekend back, he does have some tangible targets in general. One is to be close to new teammate Yuki Tsunoda, who Ricardo acknowledges is a good reference as an informed driver familiar with this car. So getting into Q2, qualifying 13th and beating Tsunoda on both days marked what must have been a satisfying first weekend back on the job, although Tsunoda was running a different, slightly slower specification of front wing after damaging his upgraded one in practice. In any case, Ricardo could only focus on himself, and he reckoned he got it close to 100%, maybe 98% in qualifying as he dialed himself into his new car. The race was always going to be another challenge entirely, given his longest consecutive run of laps in the car before the Grand Prix was an 8 lap stint in practice. But it got a lot harder when Ricardo got helplessly punted into Esteban Ocon's Alpine under braking for Turn 1 by Joe Guan Yu. That ruined any outside shot at points Ricardo had and turned his race into a long test session to get familiar with a car that had escaped damage. Thanks to the first lap incident, he ran last in the first and second stint, but he lobbied for shortening his second stint in order to capitalise on clear air. That led to him making his second stop on lap 29 after just 11 laps on the hard tyres. This left Ricardo with the longest stint of anyone in the race, which meant 40 laps on a set of mediums. That allowed him to jump Hulkenberg, Tsunoda, Joe and Magnussen when they made their second stops. He managed to tie as well, with a little advice from the pit wall along the way, and was even let off the leash in the final five laps to try to chase down Valtteri Bottas. He was 3.3 seconds behind Bottas at the start of his final lap, but then had to back off for a blue flag to let Lando Norris pass, meaning he finished six seconds behind. After the chequered flag, he lamented the Turn 1 collision and said he felt they had shown some pace when in clear air and thanked the team for his first weekend back. But Ricardo always felt the basic results of this weekend were largely irrelevant, and we agree that there's something he's rediscovered that matters a lot more. If Ricardo is going to win his dream Red Bull Racing return at Perez's expense sooner or later, he'll need to do a lot more than have a solid Alpha Tauri debut. By the end of the damaging two-year stint struggling to adjust to the curiosities of McLaren's cars, Ricardo's driving style had been contorted beyond recognition and he was a shadow of the fearsome, instinctive driver who had been such a force with Red Bull and even Renault. And when it emerged he'd return in a car with a pronounced weakness on corner entry, it also raised the prospect of Ricardo being confronted once again with a limitation that exposed him at McLaren. It will take a while longer to see if that happens. The weaknesses of the Alpha Tauri were not so apparent in Hungary because the tyre compounds and setup requirements at this race meant good tyre grip and high downforce for every team. But beyond that, there's already something very different about this version of Ricardo compared to the one who struggled so much at McLaren. It's obvious that Ricardo had come to regret working so hard to tailor his driving to what teammate Lando Norris was doing to get the most out of the McLaren. In hindsight, Ricardo feels he would have been better suited driving more naturally. It may not have been exactly what the McLaren needed, but overall it would have probably had a better end result than the counterintuitive mess Ricardo ended up in. Having unpicked all of that on the Red Bull simulator and had an eight month break from driving anything in reality, Ricardo is adamant that the best approach is to drive his way and make the best of it. He got a taste of that in his Red Bull test at Silverstone and that new attitude was on display in Hungary as well. He spent the whole weekend on the front foot and got into a positive rhythm. It's partly circumstance driven given the low base he will have started from with his unfamiliarity with the AT04, but he blew a lot of the cobwebs away in his Red Bull tyre test already. His race comeback included legitimate in-weekend progress, and it was a far cry from much of Ricardo's time at McLaren, which was spent seeing what Lando Norris was doing, knowing where his own deficits were, and then struggling to do anything about it. Ricardo said he would come back on his terms, drive the car his way, and it would be a natural process for better or worse, and so far it's for the better. It's far too early to say that the old Ricardo's back, but this is certainly a demonstrably different version to the one we saw at the end of last year. That Ricardo was not a convincing candidate for any seat on the grid. This one has made a decent start to his bid to take one of the very best.